Okay, okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, I know what will infuriate people. Here, let's see. Yeah. Actually, let's do it right here. Okay, there we go. <laughs> let's see who's gonna notice. Hey, it's Soul, and welcome back to Warcraft Weekly with a special dedication to Skag, who will not see this shout out because he skipped it. Also, I'm giving away two months of game time. All you have to do is copy this phrase over here into a comment below. Thanks, Blizzard. Thanks for making me blow twice as much gold as before. The winner will be announced next week. This show wouldn't be around if it wasn't for the generosity of our fellows over at our Twitch channel, which airs Tuesday through Thursday mornings. Drop a line and say hi. Let me be that soothing and maybe obnoxious ambient sound on your browser tab. And also thanks to newcomer Lady Beckerton for joining the Patreon fam and to Achtung who is freaking insane. Now let's get to the news. A quick update from last week, donations to Doctors Without Borders have exceeded 500,000 bucks, unlocking Bananas the Pet, the first of two milestones for current WoW subscribers. To get it, you just need to go to the Blizzard store page, for some reason you can't do this in-game, and then claim the pet. For some who already happen to have the pet from the trading card game, this might be your second, so you can maybe wait until after August when the giveaway ends and only a few million people have the pet. No harm playing the long game, right? If you haven't donated yet and are considering, check the link below where you can make a contribution. This week brought some unexpected and mostly unwanted news. Blizzard is limiting the options that we have when it comes to purchasing WoW game time with our battle net balance. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna have to explain this very carefully. There's been a lot of anger and confusion out there on social media. Hopefully when I'm through though, you'll no longer be confused, just angry, or maybe a little bit less angry. And maybe this will change by the time I publish this video. If it does, just keep watching anyway so you know that at the very least, I tried. In the past, there were multiple options of buying game time with Battle.net Balance. And keep in mind that I'm talking about game time and not recurring subscriptions, there is a difference. With game time, there was a 30, I think a 60, a 90, and a 120 day option, which included some modest discounts for buying in bulk. This can be bought with cash or with Battle.net Balance. Battle.net Balance is obtained by pumping cash into the account, or in the case of World of Warcraft, buying tokens with gold and converting that into 15 bucks of Battle.net Balance per token. Folks who have the gold could easily pay month to month. More learned folk could turn multiple tokens into balance and then use said balance to buy this WoW game time in bulk. So not only are they using someone else's money to buy game time, they got it at a discount too. As of this writing, the 90 and 120 day blocks of game time are gone, but so is the 30 day game time option. The only game time option that you can buy or gift is the 60 day option. Meanwhile, recurring subscriptions, which cannot be maintained with Battle.net Balance, you have to pay it with cash or a credit card or something, that hasn't been touched. You can subscribe and then immediately unsubscribe to simulate that one month feel. There are still discounts to paying for a bulk subscription in advance, including the promotional amounts if your recurring subscription is long enough. So let me make it like triple quadruple clear. If you have a recurring subscription, nothing changes. If you buy game time a la carte, your options are fewer. And as you can guess, this news went over extremely well. I'm speculating here, but the way I see it, Blizzard, as in, you know, not the WoW devs, but Blizzard, they had a few goals in mind. The first was to close that little loophole that let people with lots of Battle.net balance buy, sub, buy subs in bulk. The loophole is closed, and done deal. The second goal was to encourage players to go the subscription route over the game time route. And this doesn't sit too well with me. I admit that there are a lot of options on how to get a subscription to WoW, but I fail to see a great reason to take options away. We can subscribe for a month and immediately cancel. It just takes approximately six, actually it takes exactly six clicks. I counted. And if Blizzard was really itching to close the loophole, they could have done something else. They could have made it so that bulk game time could no longer be bought with Battle.net Balance. So why go this route? 
why take away the option to buy or gift a single month? Of course, the cynic in me and the cynic among uh, a lot of folks in social media says that, oh, it's because Blizzard prefers that you either pay for a two month subscription or they're banking on you accidentally letting your subscription renew even if you stopped playing. You know, they would basically fleece an extra month's worth of time from you to increase the what uh, player retention or whatever. If this were a game, we would call that min maxing. But in real life, especially because it's our money, this is greed. I won't pretend to know the reasoning, and to be honest, I don't even think I'm owed one because, well, as a consumer, it's not gonna sway me. It's not gonna change my opinion on this. If Blizzard wants to close the loophole, that's entirely expected and well understood, but I think the one month option should return, period. But how about you folks on that warm toilet seat of yours? Is this gonna affect you at all? Is Do you subscribe or do you pay month to month? Will these missing payment options be critical to your continued subscription? Let us know in a comment and fire away. This week, after a lot of teasing and part of Blizzard and Wowhead and a lot of the Burning Crusade classic enthusiasts, the hotly anticipated beta finally opened up to rabid fans, nostalgia chasers, and me. I've been wanting to talk about BC Classic for a while. As you know, this channel focuses heavily on the modern, aka the retail version of the game, but this is a channel about all things Warcraft. So I want to share in the excitement with fans from all over who have wanted to re-experience the Burning Crusade as it once was, or even for the very first time. The classic release of World of Warcraft has, at least in my opinion and observation, done more to better the fandom as a whole, in spite of the obvious polarized conversations that take place in forums and comments and social media. I expect the Burning Crusade classic to be no less hyped up, this time with a bit more liberty at making quality of life changes to make the experience better, even including unnerfed versions of raid bosses for additional challenge. However. I'd like to take my time to share concerns that I have, maybe doubts, and this is very, very much just an opinion. I'm gonna set up this narrative and I'd like you to listen to the whole thing before you tear me down in the comments. Just humor me for a few moments, all right? When World of Warcraft Classic first opened its limited testing phases a while back, players kind of lost their minds. The excitement and the hype was contagious and the release, the release was a total disaster. That is, it was so successful that the limited number of realms that Blizzard launched couldn't handle it, leading to, what, like half a day's queue time uh, just to get in and start leveling. And this lasted for, well, for quite some time. Many said during Classic's testing and launch that it was like a return home after a pretty insane decade-long journey throughout the Warcraft universe. Players got to revisit a more or less pristine world considered lost. I mean, unofficially, it existed on private servers and in the fond memories of thirsty players. WoW Classic brought things back like an untouched Scarlet Monastery, the original Temple of Atal Hakar, Thousand Needles without water. It felt like we could explore again, and we could maybe feel lost again, maybe a little weak, maybe a little ignorant, even with years of data cast in the shadow over the experience. Because yes, many prominent players preached the journey, not the destination, but also didn't hesitate to rush to endgame and kind of trivialize the content, but that was their choice. And the phases of Classic did play out like the most blatant, naked form of time gating, with mid to top players more than fully prepared, barreling through as soon as the next gate opened. Those are high profile, but rare happenings in the grander scheme though. Classic endures for its long-term audience, and it'll continue to endure for people who want to stay there, as well as people who want to make a copy of their character while they move on to the Burning Crusade. But will the Burning Crusade hold up the same way? Will the same or even a greater number of players than Classic, like, pour through the Dark Portal and flood Hellfire Peninsula with more skeletons than what lines the Path of Glory? I'm very confident that BC Classic will be a measurable success. But at the same time, it would only be a fraction of the success that WoW Classic enjoyed. But why the doubt? Let's start with rating. 
The release of Classic Vanilla demonstrated what many, including myself, predicted, that today's WoW player, or MMO player, or gamer in general, is much more sophisticated than before. Today's internet is far more reliable than before. Except for yours. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you, who always lags at like the perfect moment to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Anyway, um, all the big talk over how much more difficult it was to prepare for classic raiding was given a pretty solid punch to the throat. Not to say that the world first level raiders defined how easy vanilla raids are, but they certainly left a roadmap to quickly turn progression into a farm. BC Classic, like Vanilla Classic, will be split into five phases, but what I find most curious are the first two phases. Phase one will include Karazhan, Gruul's, and Magtheridon's Lair. And that's it, compared to BC's original release when Serpent Shrine Cavern and Tempest Keep were also available at launch. Those raids are going to open up in Phase 2, whenever that is. Now don't get me wrong, Phase 1 is going to feel like the longest of all these phases because for would-be raiders, there's going to be a lot of dungeon farming while obtaining these attunements. Meanwhile, Gruul and Magtheridon can be accessed without an attunement. You can enter those instances at level 65 even. So we might see those bosses go down before we even see the first level 70, which would be pretty impressive. The current beta has a level cap of 64, so maybe we'll see more than a few practice runs before release. Anyway, I'm wary about the possible wait time between phases 1 and 2, because how long is too long? In the past, raiders were compelled to farm the earlier raids to get the gear to access the harder raids, but depending on the length of phase 1, how many people will be fully decked out in tier 4 gear? armed with a dragon spine trophy or similar items, and how much more uh, profession stuff is going to be crafted by then. By contrast, Phase 2 is just the two new raids. We don't know if players will have to wait for Phase 2 to begin before starting those attunement quests, or if they can be completed beforehand. Regardless, it's going to feel pretty similar to how the classic raids played out, with a really high risk of the content being steamrolled under the overpreparedness of BC Classic players, and this trend could continue on throughout the rest of the game. Having two phases for what was the launch of BC may make up for a more fair and a less toxic experience. You know, there would be less racing and more time for alts and players of different skill levels to be uh, ready for raiding but it risks compromising that sense of accomplishment if Phase 2 were to open and then the two new slash old raids are instant farm content. Raiding and of course arena PvP isn't the only thing about WoW Classic. Throughout all of BC Classic's phases will be what I hope to be a healthy profession economy, with epic items and tons of stuff to farm for in order to craft what will be a number of best in slot items at least during Phase 1 and Phase 2. I have nothing to back up this next statement, but I imagine that there's going to be a lot, a lot more gold coming into Classic BC than there was in the original launch, due to more efficient farming in part of players, not to mention the unfortunate botting. How likely is it that fresh level 70s will be on flying mounts at max speed like right away? It could be more normalized than we may think. In fact, I'm guessing that's similar to Legion or Battle for Azeroth and with Shadowlands, we might see this massive amount of gold suddenly enter the gold market at launch, coming from the players who sold all of these instance carries, or sold all those herbs that they botted, um, or just buying gold. I'm getting a little dystopian here, I admit, but those same people will be in a position to easily make all that gold back, given that flying is available at the start of the expansion. I can see some realms, especially PvP realms, be extremely aggressive towards people who are still plugging away at leveling, or can't fly yet, or fly too slowly. I hope it doesn't get to be as bad, but I've observed enough behavior out there in the world of Warcraft that some measure of this is likely. But the biggest reason why I have some skepticism of BC Classic's grand success goes back to what I said earlier about WoW Classic's success. A lot of the excitement, in fact, I'm going to argue that most of the excitement goes back to what was considered lost. Two untouched continents, an arguably better looking Orgrimmar, a bunch of dungeons, and a world that after more than 10 years, it felt like we were explorers all over again. 
Many people never forgave Blizzard for Cataclysm that forever changed the old world. Burning Crusade Classic is a revisit to gameplay that has since been lost. You know, talent trees, functioning set bonuses, tons of gems and sockets, and the most punishing series of attunements in World of Warcraft history. But the world of Burning Crusade Classic, Outland, it never went away. I'm sure you folks can nail me on a few details here, but you can log into Shadowlands right now, walk your butt over to Outland, and see the same world. Play through the same quests. Well, okay, maybe like 98% of the quests. A few weeks ago, we had BC time walking. At any time, fresh characters could select the Burning Crusade in Chromie time and play through the same quests and dungeons, which made some of the Twitch channels feel really cringy, as if, you know, they were coming in like it's their very first time stepping into Outland. Right. How disorienting will it feel for someone to play through the slave pens in Chromie time, and then time walking, and then BC Classic? Gameplay is definitely one thing, a big thing, actually. But what is it that we're going back to in BC Classic? In fact, if you look at the right side of the screen, how much of this Outland footage came from the beta? All of it? None of it? Could you tell the difference? What we're going to see in Classic BC, and probably Classic Lich King, because you know that's going to happen, is a return to the gameplay that once was, but with the modern players of today. Whether that's an enhancement or a contamination of the original experience is anybody's observation, but I predict that the nostalgia factor is going to be cut into an uneven half, because unlike vanilla, BC has been mostly kept intact. And that's it. That's me sharing my thoughts. I want to thank you for listening, and now the floor is yours. Share your unfiltered and merciless rebuttal in a comment below. And what other thoughts do you have about Burning Crusade Classic? Did you skip vanilla to jump in on this? Are you waiting for a uh, Lich King Classic? Are you in the beta right now? And if you are, what's your experience been like so far? That's going to be the show, and I'm extremely grateful that you made it to the end. This week, I did continue to tailor content towards an audience outside of the big three, you know, the so-called hardcore peoples. It went as expected, with unfortunately way fewer people watching this content, but a lot of engagement and conversations, and I really appreciate that. I am going to soldier on with the discourse and keep giving feedback on where WoW might have strayed away from the path, whatever that means. No guarantees, but next week, I plan on trying to tackle the story. How did we, the champions of Azeroth, end up here from the adventurer in Sunstrider Isle to the commander slash order hall slash leader champion of Azeroth person standing around in the afterlife riding on a dinosaur? Did the story move so fast that it left players behind? Did we sacrifice roleplay and immersion for gameplay and spectacle? I hope you give this one a watch, so stay tuned, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for a regular flow of reminders and tips and commentary. Like the video, and don't forget to leave your thoughts on the Burning Crusade Classic or anything else that I talked about today. Consider becoming a patron to support our focus on delivering content to signal boost the needs of players outside of what I've been calling the Big Three. And all that's all I said all the good stuff. We'll see you later, friends. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy and stay breezy.